kutoka maeneo ya magharibi ya Kenya nikiwa Bungoma mimi ni Robert Wanyonyi na hii ni KTN News This is KTN News And uh, welcome back to Kivumbi 2017. We're going to now be winding up on what we're talking about right here with our panelists. And just before we took the break, I know, Vincent, you are raring <laughs> to go. You wanted to answer to what um, uh, Mr. Mohammed had uh, mentioned or, or to add on to that. So carry on. Um, I think uh, I want to make uh, certain recommendations. First, to thank you, Mike. Uh, for giving us this platform because this has been not just a show but we are really discussing real issues. Uh, for me the, for the recommendations that I would make in the event the Supreme Court upholds the decision uh, or Uru Kenyatta's win or IBC's he, uh, announcement yes announcement, uh, announcement the, because the, the announcement was the IBC made the announcement Yeah. Uh, for me his legacy will be national unity that, that will be his legacy. Forget the, the transformation, the roads. That, his legacy was building and, and, and making Project Kenya a success. So that is uh, number but, one. But, but what do you think holds us back? Because we already have no. the TJRC report, which had given some major recommendations of how this country, first of all, can deal with uh, historical <laughs> injustices. Now, that, those are some of the tools that can facilitate the realization of Project Kenya. So they, uh, for me, uh, that is the policy goal. Now the tools includes what you're pointing out on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on TGRC. Number two is that we really need to, we condemn the former constitution, yet that there were many things in that constitution that actually would be very instrumental moving forward. So like uh, the position of leader of opposition, it was in parliament, well financed, having resources to facilitate somebody who has gotten a significant vote to continue prosecuting the agenda in their policy discourse. One of the things that I fault the drafters of our constitution is that they, they did not embrace the African philosophy philosophy of what leadership means, the inclusivity. Uh, Mike, I, I grew up up country, and one of the things that happened is that if you did not participate in hunting, in the evening if people are coming back, they also cut a portion to ensure that you're good. In fact, even when you got, when you got married and you don't have a cow, elders sat down and they took care of you because they knew children would come and you will need milk. You can pay slowly. I think the restorative nature of justice in the African dimension needs to have been inculcated. You, you, you cannot lock out six million, somebody who got six million from the leadership discourse. So in my view, He's still a leader. Uh, He's right. in my view, we need to uh, rather maybe amend the constitution, increase the membership of the Senate and have uh, anyone who scores, since we already have a principles on the two-thirds gender principle, which was an inclusivity, anyone who scores a third of the total votes cast, uh, the president, the running mate, the president and the presidential candidate and the running mate automatically becomes members of the Senate. Mm -hmm. So that, that the, the issues that they wanted to process, because they, they sold an agenda to the people and the people bought it. So I think the, uh, this is my recommendation, and I'm happy the, uh, the deputy CEO of the uh, NCIC is here. After whatever happens, after the elections, irrespective of the results, we need a national uh, conversation conference mm. so that we re look at our constitution, we re look at devolution, how do we strengthen and move our country forward. Okay. If that should happen before November. Before November. Paul, your thoughts on whether the, uh, the notion of winner takes it all is what maybe puts us on edge every single time we have an election to a point where you'll find our leaders are very, very influential if it, this, this whole scenario that we're talking about could have taken a different turn, should, for instance, the opposition leaders have told people to go out and demonstrate, which certainly would have seen, they, they hold a lot of power with what they say. The fact that they stood and said, we want you to uh, keep your cool, hold your peace, meant that Kenyans basically held back. Literally, we're waiting for them. But do you feel that maybe that could be uh, a resolve if we talked about the winner takes it all kind of a scenario that we have in our constitution right now. Uh, Gitonga, to me, there are institutions or certain frameworks that we need to reform. Like I can tell you, the presidency, the way it is structured in this country, is a very, 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 very powerful 
powerful tool. That if, for example, the president says that you do something and you decide to defy what the president has said, then it gets to be something else. You see, if you look at other nations, like uh, maybe even the America, that first of all, there are institutions that one, the president can't interfere with, and two, there are also institutions that are actually above the presidency. But in this country, it is nearly impossible. Like even, for example, even if you've even mentioned NCIC. NCIC cannot have contrary opinion to what the president is actually saying. Because of very also simple reasons. That one, you look at one, the president is not even appreciating that institutions like parliament and the Senate are supposed to, to oversight the executive. He's even saying who should be the speaker of this house. And then what you, do, what you need to know that it is also the Senate and the National Assembly that even goes through the budget of institutions like NCIC. Or they can even decide and say that if you people are not listening to our president, we'll decide like now you are seven commissioners. We'll decide only to reduce and have only two, two commissioners. Or they'll even decide and say that, oh, that is what you people want to do. We will give you a budget of 40 million for but the whole year. But one might say that's the price of democracy because you're dealing with numbers. Uh, you, you also have opposition leaders who are in parliament and yes. some of these decisions will be made with them included. Uh, ba basically, it all gets to the point of numbers. It doesn't get to the point of, like you look at the last parliament, you look at sometimes there were issues that the last parliament needy, needy, needed to address. Like even, for example, you look at issues of vetting where some people have raised, even from the Jubilee then, have raised issues with uh, the person they've been given for like a CS. Then the president calls them and tells them that this name must go through. Then now you look at, or even now you look at right now, the president has already mentioned that some people who disagree with certain agenda risk the risk of recall. And it is very serious because the president is also more or less <laughs> the head of the Jubilee Party. But, such that if you disagree with this agenda, then actually but, can instigate. But the might also be, I, I, what yeah. is leadership? Well, leadership is uh, mm. somebody who stands and says, this is how we want our house to run. This is yes. putting I, the house in order. Allow me yes. to say this, my brother. Let, I think let, we, we need, okay. But, yes, yeah, gentlemen, go, go, go. Let, let, let me say, uh, allow him there to. Is, you know, what he's saying probably is some kind of dictatorship. And, and there is nothing wrong with that. You see in Korea, in those countries, uh, in Southeast Asia, we used to have some kind of dictators. They were called benevolent uh, dictators. Uh, dictators. If they do, if somebody does dictation in the interest of the <coughs> of the nation, me, I have no problem with it, uh, because if, if probably these guys would would do some things which probably is not in the interest of the nation. So if the leader uh, does things in the interest of the nation and dictates and what, I I, I think that that to me is. Uh, I think I wanted to raise uh, says that at times I, I we are also not honest in some of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Our constitution says very clearly that Kenya is a multi party democracy right. governed Article 4 by the values and principles under Article uh, 10 to of the Constitution. So Jubilee is a political party. They, they, when the president yesterday was speaking, you even noticed they did not do their meeting inside the, the, the they did it in a tent outside status. Of course, it's still the compounds of status, but it was a party affair. And as a political party, they took a position on how they will vote. So in my view, at times I have a concern whereby we are exalting democracy and saying it's the best way. When really people practice democracy, we also question them. Like, there is nothing, uh, the, the, I was reading some articles in part of our media saying that all oh, the increased numbers of members of parliament by Jubilee is going to be tyrannical. Now, the question I ask, they went as a political party to the Kenyan people, sold their agenda, and Kenyans bought it. So how are we to condemn uh, that political party that has actually gotten the numbers to prosecute the agenda? I think what I, I would point out, uh, Mike, is that uh, a conversation whereby when we are pushing the truth, let us push the truth and also be honest and not to be changing the truth or the truth according to somebody uh, defining it. If we are multi-party democracy, democracy is very clear. Uh, majority have their way, the minority have their say. And also, I want to say, we are in a presidential system. The opposition, there is no opposition in a presidential system. We have a minority and we have a majority. Today, as we are speaking, uh, uh, NASA is, all, is part of government through the legislature. 
they have numbers and they've already pointed out that they will participate in the swearing in. The legislature is another arm of government. So I think we need to also move away. We moved from uh, the parliamentary, mixed parliamentary system to a presidential system whereby we are all part of a team only playing different roles. Uh, others in the majority and others in the minority. Uh, ODM, in my view, for example, is going to be, is the, min is the leading, is the, after Jubilee, it is ODM in, in the National Assembly. And the leader of minority is going to come from ODM. It's a constitutional office. It's a government office. Uh, even in the Senate, if you check the, uh, the Senate minority leader, he, he or she is in a government vehicle. They are part of the government. So what we have done is it. I think we need to understand the framework where we are in, that we are all part of one thing, only playing different roles. Different roles. All right, we need uh, closing comments as time is running out. Let me start with you, Mr. Mohammed. And uh, the NCIC is not just there to take care of this period of elections, but even whatever way the ruling is going to go, we still have a country to protect. Your message to Kenyans? Our message to Kenyans, I, I think, first of all, my message to, to I think, the, to NASA is, is that... Uh, they have done very well, uh, as, as many of us as uh, Probably people expected them to call for mass action and there will be bloodshed and all that. And I think they, there was a lot of restraint, which is, which is I think, uh, many people, nobody has commended them for that. And I think probably I'll be the first person to, to do that. <laughs> <I'm on record. laughs> yes. um, secondly, I think, uh, as we said, Kenyans ha have continued to, to do their duty. They went for elections, they voted. They went back to their work. If you look around, you'll see that the economy is still, uh, I mean, it's vibrant. People are doing their own things and what. And so that is the way we should go, wait for the, uh, uh, for the Supreme Court uh, outcome. And, and, and on whatever the outcome is, we should continue uh, with k keeping the peace. But as Mr. I agree with uh, Vincent, uh, that we need to have some conversation. Because we can't continue like this. I mean, we... We need to look back. It's always good to reflect and say, say why are some of these things happening like this? Uh, might there be some mistakes which we have made? Were there steps which we took, uh, as I said, in 2007? Have we completed all those steps to, to get a Kenya where everybody feels very happy? Because today, the, if you look at Kenyans sometimes, uh, when uh, the athletics team and whatever are, are, are performing, we are, we, all are, we are all very united. Yes, even the social media, we are united. Then when we get to other things now, now even in the social media, you see some of those divisions. Mm -hmm. But I think those divisions can be cured. And some of the conversations which are going on now are healthy. Although, of course, uh, people have talked about cessation and what, and, and some people feel that it is treasonable. Uh, I mean, perhaps they are framing it in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. We should frame it in a better way and right. say, that we are still a, a, a unitary state, mm. but what are the problems of this unit? Why are we not we, uh, all we feeling have that conversation Yes, and yes. Out. I think we should have that conversation. All right, Paul, your closing comments. Um, I tend to think that maybe as a country we've started, uh, and uh, I can say it's very commendable, we've started addressing some of these issues, but some are still coming out. Like I can say, I was very happy. Uh, in this country, there are or less people look at who is talking then they look at their names, and then they begin saying this person should be on the other side. I'm very happy that in this uh, petition you could see somebody like Mutaha Kangu, somebody like Paul Mwangi being on this side. Then you also see people like Nyamodi, people like PL Olomomba being on that side. Because we've even gotten to a point where like you ask any Kenyan, uh, how the Supreme Court is going to rule. They begin looking at the names, then they tell you this person will be on this side, this person will be on this side. So to me, I think we need to begin looking at issues such that we as a country can begin trusting and we be can begin looking at what are the issues that need determination such that everybody will feel that regardless of who the name is, you will feel represented in whichever system or in whichever outcome that will come. Comes. Then yes. set your closing comments very briefly. We're out of time. Um, I, when the petitioner went to the Supreme Court, that's the following day, I am on record saying that irrespective of the outcome, it was a win for democracy, it was a win for this country, a win for our institutions. I want to really uh, celebrate their move that they went to the Supreme Court, and it has helped 